Live. Welcome to Showcase Live. I'm Carl Valeri at the 2019 Deland Sport Aviation Showcase. We are really excited to be here, finishing up the show here with John Zapp, the Flying Musicians Association. John, this is actually uh, one of my favorite things to do each time I come to an air show is talk to you because you guys both do music and are into airplanes. We enjoy both. Yes, you're right. Passion for both. <laughs> and uh, it's something else to, uh, it's to inspire our fellow pilots to share their passion in music and, uh, and vice versa. It's, it's a fun event. This the land show has been, this is our fourth year here. It's awesome. We really enjoy it. So one thing that's really cool about the Deland Show is just having that intimacy with the people and talking to folks uh, that you normally wouldn't get at, at a bigger show, I feel. Uh, very true. It's uh, all about quality, not quantity at Deland. And it, it's something that, you know, sometimes you, you, you're you overwhelmed with people and you, you're sitting there or standing there and you're talking to them and, you know, they're just kind of... It's so many that you can't get to everybody here. You can have that one-on-one -on -one intimate uh, conversation with someone and really get your point across. Right. Yeah. Well, I love hearing you guys play all the time. I hear some music in the background right now. I think that's actually one of your members. It is. That's Vinny Raniolo. He's up from uh, New Jersey, and he cut this album uh, about a year and a half ago and actually had his CD release party at the uh, Cradle of Aviation Museum. And uh, it was awesome. We had a, a table there uh, as well. And uh, he played the whole album live uh, for the attendees. And it was a great time. Vinny's um, an extremely good guitar player. He plays with Tommy Emmanuel. Uh, Tommy is probably one of the best around. And, and, uh, and Vinny's a, a fun guy. He's into aviation. I think he's working on his CFI. Guy's a good, good guy. Well, speaking about good guys and gals uh, and playing instruments, the, to join this Flying Musicians Association, I think we talked about this before. You, I, I know you don't like when I say this, but I say I'm a, I'm a former musician. I guess I'm not really a former musician, but I say I'm somebody who hasn't been playing in a while. You encourage folks like that to join. We do. As a matter of fact, I mean, once a pilot, always a pilot. Right. Uh, once a musician, always a musician. And, you know, some people think that, well, musician means that you're, you're, you just play an instrument or you just, uh, or you play for money or you're, you've cut a record. That's when you're a musician. You're a musician from the time you start playing, just as you're a pilot from the time you start flying. And uh, no matter where you are proficiency-wise, um, you know, everybody else can get something from you, can gain from you. And, and sharing your passion for aviation and music will inspire someone else to do the same. We, we were talking earlier, um, Trevor Simone was, was talking about chart all, and, and one of the biggest things I took away from that is because Trevor used to play the violin. He hasn't played it in a while. And he says, I will one day. And I said, I know you will. I said, but I tell you, it's very similar to a, a pilot who hasn't flown for a while. You lose the edge, you lose your proficiency, and and then you, you, you're hesitant to get back in in the saddle and it's the same way with music if you play an instrument or sing you, if you haven't done it for a while you, you feel like well I don't have the edge I can't and you say I'll do it again I'll do it one day and that's very similar to all the airplanes that are out on the ramp tied down that never fly because somebody says I'll get out there and, and get proficient and I'll fly and they don't and, and you know they're just so it's a very similar situation and once you get in it and start playing and get around other people that have that same uh, motivation that you do, and, and you, can, you can get back in it. So you can play, too, one day. And, and I will. And I will. And, and what's really cool is the similarities between the music, like you mentioned, but also the synergies. I love the fact that, that we have these synergies with the aviation community from the musicians community. And we're finding that, or I've found especially, that there's so many people that play instruments. So like when I'm on the road flying with folks, they're like, hey, I'm going to go play. I was like, really? You play what? And they play piano. They play guitar, etc. One thing I really appreciate about the Flying Musicians is not only are they this great group that has incredible camaraderie and does some great shows, is the fact that you're moving the needle on pushing people forward, both musically and in aviation. Exactly. It's, um, it's all about taking a gift and, and sharing it with others and uh, whether you take someone for a flight or whether you play your music to a, a, a crowd no matter the size and see the joy on their face um, you know it's, it's about once you've learned something to give back to others you know, 
It's incredible. So giving back to others is something you do through a program of scholarships, which I think is absolutely terrific. Explain to us a little bit more about that scholarship program that you have through the Flying Musicians Association. Love to. The Flying Musicians, uh, five years ago, we established a Learn to Fly program for student musicians called the FMA Solo Program. And it's just been a hit. Uh, we've gotten well over 30 uh, nominees per year. And we have given out 11 scholarships. Let's see, nine have soloed. There's two in the wings. No, wait a minute, I'm sorry, 10. Yeah, just last week, um, one of the recipients from this year had soloed. So we have one more to solo out of the ones we've given out. But of all the nominees, we've gave a ton of, of other um, kids help, assistance in some way or another, and we have a ton of solos, not to mention many, many private pilots now have come from this. So it's not that we personally did everything for them, but we've been there for them, we've helped them some, so it's been really fun. What type of requirements are there for the different scholarships? Well, there you go. Uh, we're flying musicians, so the, the first requirement is that you have to be a student musician, and we have their music teachers, uh, directors actually... Uh, nominate them and then they go through a rigorous program of, of me sorting through and and giving them a checklist to complete to evaluate where they are and then the uh, the finalists then move up to the board and the board votes on them and I'm just there at that point for to a, a tiebreaker right. so <laughs> it's it's really interesting and you know, we've, you, we've got um, two of the recipients have been in Canada, so we're getting more and more nominees from Canada. Actually, i got to tell you, the nominees in Canada, um, they have done awesome when you consider that the majority of the nominees are from the States, but they've already gotten two awards up there. You know, so that's just the quality of these students. Uh, every single one of them are high achieving, they're, but they're not just... They're not just musically gifted and, 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 and achieving and academics, but they're good citizens. These are the kids that give back. These are the kids that the band director or music teacher says they're there early to help set up. They're there late to help break down. Uh, they're always willing to, to mentor the underclassmen. Um, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for students that are good citizens that will be future leaders. And we do believe there are going to be future leaders. Aviation, I think, is a, a great tool, and it's also a great teacher. And the skills that you learn there help you for the rest of your life. In the same way, I think learning a musical instrument does that for you. In what ways do you feel a musical instrument would help somebody in their life later on? Well, learning music um, helps you to take a difficult task, uh, break it down into parts, and, and, um, and learn it, and, and learn how to get through it. It also teaches you how to practice. It teaches you that if you do practice, you can achieve. Um, it's not about, well, this guy has talent. Well, how, how did you get so good practice? It's like, man, you're so talented. How good are you? It's practice, you know? I wish I could do this. Practice. <laughs> um, so, so as a student musician, you learn that if you take something difficult task and you practice, you can, you can, can complete it. And then you're not just practicing because you're trying to put hours on the clock. You're practicing for precision. And so these things are, are very beneficial to anything you do in life, is, is to learn that it, it, no matter how insurmountable the task may be, if you sit there and break it down into sections, and then you learn them and you practice and you practice to be good at it, then you can, you can achieve it. You mentioned practice, and I know I've been flying for many years, thousands of hours, and I still practice. Uh, you've been doing this for a while, playing musical instruments. Do you still do the same? Do you practice consistently like we do as pilots? You bet. You have to. You know, you get to a point, and no matter where you are in aviation or, or music or anything, probably, that if you reach a level, then you are anything less is just not good enough. So practice is the only way to, to maintain that level. If, if I didn't go out and fly on a regular basis, I would, I would be very uncomfortable taking passengers. Um, and I'm very uncomfortable going on stage if I haven't practiced. 
Um, so it depends on where you get, what level do you reach? Are you a commercial pilot? Are you an ATP? Uh, your standards are a little bit higher as you go up the ladder. And so therefore, practice is the only way to maintain the proficiency. And it's not for other people as much as it's for yourself. Because they may not notice, but you will. Yeah. That's a very well said in, in aviation and in, and in being a musician. You know, it, we talked about this before. There's this camaraderie. There's a lot of situations where we find people that are involved in, mus in musical instruments or in some way, both manufacturing, playing, etc., that uh, we never knew about before. I think you had a great example that we talked about the other day of somebody you discovered actually was into music that actually was involved in a space program? Well, yeah, in a way. Um, he has a saxophone that was in space, went up on a shuttle mission. Um, J.D. is um, a member out of Houston, and he was a student in high school and wanted to learn to fly. And he, the Air Force came around and said, uh, what do I do? He said, whoa. He, they said, go to college. You need a college degree. And, and he said, okay, and what? what? What do I have to study? Anything. Well, he was in a high school band, so he said music. So he went and got a degree in music. Well, while he was at college in the music program, of course, that's all he could do is think about flying and talk about flying. And, and he had a buddy that was also in a band that he became friend, good friends with, and that's Ron McNair. And Ron didn't quite share the passion for flying, but he, they shared music. And eventually, Ron went on to become an astronaut. And Ron actually took uh, J.D.'s uh, wife's saxophone up into space, um, and she has it to this day. Um, just a, an incredible thing. J.D. went on after college and, and joined the Air Force. He's, he started flying. He was a, a flight instructor in the Air Force, and then he went and flew for Continental and ended his career flying uh, overseas routes with uh, FedEx. And everywhere he went, he took his backpack, and in that backpack was his flugelhorn, which he played at clubs around the country. What a great story that is. I mean, that's terrific. A testament to, to both the musicians and the association and, and that camaraderie that we have as, as both pilots and, I guess, as musicians. One of the things that I, I do want to stress, though, is that if, if you're somebody that's interested in, in music, if you're somebody that's interested in aviation, don't be afraid to come up and talk to John or anybody else in the Flying Musicians Association. You, too, can be a member. How can they do that? Well, that's the incredible thing, I think, about the association as it's now, we're celebrating 10 years this year, is that it's a network. It's a network of people, and, and it's the only way you're going to, to get anywhere in life is to network with others who share your passion or in your lane that can help you, been there, done that, etc. Uh, go to flyingmusicians.org. Uh, flying Musicians, just, just search it on a search engine. For flying musicians, you'll find us. We're out there, and we have many domains, but you, they all point to the same place. And uh, there, you can join up. You can ask questions. Um, see me at any of these events. Um, and um, on our website, my phone number is on there. So call me. It's really easy to find you, other than flyingmusicians.org. Uh, if you hear music, you're at an air show see people with musical instruments, you're probably going to find John Zapp somewhere around there. <laughs> well, I'm, I have been at most of the events for the last 10 years, and um, it's, it's, been a, it's been fun. It's been fun meeting people, hearing stories. Um, we not only go to aviation events, but we're also in the music events. And uh, the National Association of Music Merchants have two shows that are comparable to Sun and Fun and Air Venture and the one in the summer is like Sun and Fun and it's right before Oshkosh or Air Venture. It's in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. It's called Summer Nam. And then in January it's the Nam show which is as big if not bigger than Air Venture. We've got people that that um, you know that are musicians, uh, top-notch music musicians, uh, manufacturers, uh, reps, etc. It's just huge. It's it's like Air Venture. Uh, so instead of having pilots there, there are musicians there. Instead of having vendors for airplane parts or airplanes, there's vendors who for you know parts and accessories for musical instruments, etc. Uh, just an incredible event. Um, I, I need to tell you about a story at the Summer Nam. Uh, I was there right before going to Air Venture. I left Nashville and went to uh, to uh, Oshkosh, and I was there. And there was a new there's a new chief at uh, Gibson Guitars, 
Uh, so I went to listen to him uh, give his little presentation. And afterwards, I went up to him because I heard that his father was in the Canadian Air Force. And I said, okay, I'm making, so I, well, are, I, I asked him, I said, are you a pilot like your predecessor was? Because the previous uh, CEO was a pilot. He flew a Cirrus. And he goes, no, but I got a story to tell you. Really? So here, everybody's standing around, you know, and he just engages with me on a personal level. And he says, wow, this is incredible. He says, when my dad was deployed years ago and his buddies, he said, they were, um, unbeknownst to them, the wives got together and learned to fly. He says, so when they came back from deployment, the first thing, when they got off the plane on the ramp, the wives took them and in, in arm in arm over to their airplanes, their little Cessnas, and took each of them up for a flight as their, as their passenger. And it, it was so cool. And, and I'm just glued, obviously. And he's glued, I mean, and everybody else is going, you know, okay. <laughs> you know, some are probably as in awe as we, as we were. But um, it was just a really interesting thing. So, so that's how I, at music events, we love talking about aviation um, because there's so many pilots in the music community. And then at aviation events, we like to talk about music because there really are a lot of musicians in the aviation world. Incredible amount of synergy there. Well, John, this has been great talking to you. Anything else you want us to know about the flymusicians.org? Well, it's always wonderful if you donate to our scholarship fund. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're always in need of uh, funds for our programs and scholarships and, and your support. Uh, we are a small, a small nonprofit, 501c3, um, so we don't have a lot of overhead um, and your support is wonderful. If you're a musician, pilot if you have a passion for aviation and music um, your membership supports the association so anything you can do to help us is wonderful but but just encourage another individual that either flies or plays music or sings to um, to continue with doing that don't don't you know if somebody hasn't flown for a while, encourage them to do. The Rusty Pilots uh, program that AOPA has um, is wonderful for doing that in the, in the aviation community. And perhaps we should have a Rusty Musicians uh, presentation to give to people who, like yourself, are a musician, but you just haven't played in a while. You're not proficient. I like that idea. The time for me to go get proficient. John Zapp here with Flying Musicians. Uh, association, flymusiciansassociation.org. Don't forget to make sure you donate for the scholarships. Become a member. It'll help out with those scholarships because they really do a lot to help people. John, thanks so much for talking to us again. Thank you for what you do. Uh, we appreciate you, and um, if, if it wasn't for you, a lot of folks wouldn't know about this. So thank you. Oh, well, uh, thanks so much, and I appreciate it. As a matter of fact, this will, for this year, for this event, the 2019 DeLand Sport Aviation Showcase. This is going to be uh, my last interview for this year, but I can't wait to be back for 2020 and more interviews. Don't forget you can download these on Facebook, Facebook Live, and also we're going to have them uploaded to YouTube where you can get the high resolution. It's over at YouTube, the Land Sport Aviation Showcase. You can e download them there and watch them all year long. We're going to have things going on all year, but primarily this event. Carl Valeri reporting here from the Land Sport Aviation Showcase. I want to bit, shout out to Dave Schalbetter for what he does here and also Michael Daniels, Elizabeth Daniels, Tom Frick, Roy Brewer, and the other parts of the team like Jana Phillip who allow us to come here and do this. Folks, until next year, the 2020 DeLand Sport Aviation Showcase. This is Carl Valeri reporting here for the 2019 DeLand Sport Aviation Showcase.